Are we recording? On, yeah, know. okay, yep. sorry. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, so welcome back, everybody, um, from your break. And um, so today we're going to do some um, look at look into best practice strategy checklist, which we've put up here, some tools that you can have around accepting the job and um, before the call starts and start of a call, during the call, ending the call and after the job. So we're going to go step by step on um, on what you what strategies and what tools you can use when you're on the job. Mm -hmm. um, and also we have available a PDF of the checklist that looks something like this that you might want to print out and follow along with. Okay. Step one. So I'm going to um, take you through accepting the job and I will ask for Lavinia's help, particularly for this slide because she has much more expertise here than I do. Um, so just flagging some things that you might want to know and check before you even accept the job. So this is at the time when the interpreting agency calls you and gives you, you some details and wants to know whether you're available. So we want to mm -hmm. highlight some of the aspects that you might want to consider uh, in making the decision is this the job for you so some of the things that you want to check and confirm will be the language uh, relationships I will ask Lavinia to talk about in a sec the topic um, just to make sure that you're competent to perform it might be a topic that you're really not familiar with in which case um, they would be better off with a different interpreter impartiality and cultural appropriateness and again Lavinia is the expert who will talk to you about this a little bit more um, and also to check whether phone interpreting is appropriate for this assignment bearing in mind some of the types of assignments that we talked about before that might not be appropriate for um, for phone uh, so if it's a mental health consultation you might want to know a little bit more about the client to determine whether this is going to work over the telephone Hmm. For pre-booked jobs, um, this is give, gives you a better opportunity to prepare for assignments because uh, when you booked ahead of the time, you can even ask for some um, briefing and documents ahead of the session to prepare better. It gives you an opportunity to educate the professional about the phone interpreting setup and how to best work with interpreters. And often, and also to research and to develop your glossary or list of terminology that you think might come up in that session. But I will let's go back to um, the relationships and cultural appropriateness that will be important factors in you making the decision whether this is the appropriate job for you. So yeah. over to Lavinia. Yeah, so um, most importantly, we need to make sure that the language that you're about to do the job is the right language. So sometimes, you know, the doctors or the nurses or the um, the lawyer um, or the mental health professional, wherever you are, might say, oh, we've got an Aranda speaker here. Um, now, if you are a Central Eastern Aranda speaker, it is a different type of Aranda to your Western Aranda. It's the same language, but different variation and different sort of dialect in speaking. And the second thing we need to be mindful of is the relationship. So, um, through culture, you know, is that your poison relationship? Are you able to interpret for that that person? Is there something in place that makes it a little bit hard for you to do that job? And sometimes even the topic. So if you are a male and they want to do a talk on cervical cancer, you obviously you will go and get a, a female to then do that role. So um, to make sure that, you know, you are being culturally appropriate in your approach and that you are asking and covering all those questions, important questions at the start before taking Taking on the job. Um, yeah, so be mindful of all those things before starting the job or accepting the job. Okay, so we thought we'd better um, put this into practice in a few different scenarios. Now, I know there are some pretty fabulous bookings offices out there that work for the interpreting services, but sometimes you don't get enough information and so it is up to you the interpreter to make sure you get that information before you uh, make a decision on whether you can accept okay so i'm going to um make an, uh, lavinia do the hard work here so i'm going to be <laughs> uh the booking officer from the interpreting agent and i'm going to call around for some phone jobs that uh we've got bookings for for tomorrow We'll assume that you are available tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay, ready? Ring, 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 ring. 
Hello, this is Lavinia. <laughs> Hi, Lavinia. It's Lauren <laughs> from the interpreting service. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Hey, Lavinia, I've got a Lurita interpreting job over the phone tomorrow morning. Can I confirm you for that job? Um, can you please tell me a little bit more around the Lurita speaker? Now, is this person a Lurita Pindabi speaker or Southern Lurita Yankunjara speaker? And um, mm. which community are they from? Look, the form just says Lurita as it often does, but it mm. does say the client's from Papanya. Okay, so that would be then Rich Penderby speaker. Um, can you also confirm the client's name and what the topic is about, please? Yep, so the client is Tommy Jones Jungler. Mm -hmm. um, and it's at the aged care and it's with the nutritionists and they're um, talking about the different foods that he can and can't eat at aged care. Okay, no, that job should be doable. I'll be ready to do it. It's all good. Cool. Okay, so relationship's good, topic's good. Language group is good. Language, and it's appropriate to do over the phone. Yes. Boom, lock it in. Okay, <laughs> call number two. Bring, 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 bring. Hello, this is Anya. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Anya. It's Lauren again from the interpreting service with another job for tomorrow. Can I confirm you for a, a literature job for tomorrow? It is Pindaby Literature. It is Pindaby Literature. Um, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about the job um, to, just to make sure that it's a culturally appropriate and it's the right job for me, please? Sure. Yeah, well, it is someone mm -hmm. similar age. They're in their 30s. Tommy Jones, but it's a different Tommy Jones to the other one. Okay, yeah. Uh, this, this is a Jacamara. Which one? Ah, yes, yes. And what's the topic? Um, so he's in hospital and it's to do with prostate cancer. Yeah, I'm going to have to decline the job um, for a few reasons. It's a little bit culturally inappropriate for me to have this conversation. Um, the male is my age group and also happens to be the right skin to be my husband's um, partner. So I'm going to have to decline the job and handball it over to one of my other professional interpreters um, to do the job. Another lady interpreter? or Preferably another male. So I highly recommend somebody like Lance Giacomato to do the job. <laughs> Don't be mean. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go with call number three. Bring, 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 bring. Hello. This is Nabal Daddy speaking. <laughs> Hello. This is Nakamara at the interpreting agency. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Nakamara. Hey, I've got a, um, a Pintabi Literature um, job for tomorrow over the phone. Um, yeah, can you accept this job? Um, can you tell me um, the name of the client or the patient and um, where they're from and the language group and and the topic, please? Oh, wow, that was a lot, a lot of demand. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I can't accept this job unless I know it's the right language group and the right right topic. Oh, wow, you're thorough. Okay, so <laughs> it's been to be literature. Oh, mm -hmm. I think it is. They said Lurica, but they're from Kintor. Is that right? Yeah, so that's Lurica Pindaby, yep, or Pindaby mm -hmm. Lurica. Mm -hmm. It's a lady. Her name is Janie Jones Nangala. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Should, so those two are okay so far. So what's the topic on? Oh, uh, yeah, nothing too controversial. So it's just um, peritoneal dialysis setup. So she's going to be being hooked up to um, the PD dialysis, like the bag dialysis, and they're going to be showing her how to set everything up, um, you know, however that works. Mm. So, um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to decline this job only because I need to have one-on-one -on -one time with preferably the doctor um, to tell me and explain to me what a – is it peritoneal? The Tenille bag is, and um, for me to be able to actually see what the doctor is actually showing to be able to then interpret to the client. So it's a little bit difficult to do over the phone, and it's going to use a lot of Western terms that I will need to get a lot of briefing before I begin my job. Okay. So right. if, if I could do a face-to-face -face rather than a phone, 
That should be fine, but not over the phone. I'm going to have to decline. Okay, so yeah, you'd want a, a briefing with the doctor first and face to face. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, we'll see if we can make that happen. Right, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Nakamura. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Okay, it was interesting that third scenario when we did this session the other day, we had one of the interpreters who works at the hospital and knows all about PD and has done this setup a million times who thought she probably could pull this off over the phone. So, you know, all interpreters are going to be different with their levels mm. of preparations and preparedness to do things over the phone. Mm. Um, but, yeah, there are lots of good aspects to these scenarios to consider. So it would be great if you can come up with other scenarios that have happened to you or you know happen at your interpreting service and know how to think your way through that decision making process because you don't have to say yes to everything but we also know that interpreters become interpreters because they want to help like we, we don't want to just say no and let that person suffer in hospital or at the aged care and not have a service um so we also want to make sure we end up with a, a pathway forwards if you if you can't accept the job okay let's get on to our next step in our checklist I'm so glad that this session is being recorded because you two um, did a wonderful job. I really enjoyed watching, accepting <laughs> the call. Um, it was entertaining and it also emphasised all the different points that we've talked about up to um, now, about different things to take into consideration whether the job is right for you. So that was really good. Uh, now there is more before the call starts. So we're not going to jump into the call just yet, but um, we're going to um, talk about all these things that you have to make sure are right um, before you're ready to proceed. So we've mentioned this already that good equipment is really important um, and uh, we're all wearing headphones here, uh, the noise cancelling headphones and they work really well for phone interpreting and education sessions. Some of you might be really lucky and you might be working in a booth in an office and you're looking at a picture of uh, a beautiful colleague of mine, a Korean interpreter from the Healthcare Interpreter Service and she's sitting in one of um, our video and phone interpreting booths. And these are completely soundproof. Um, all the equipment, uh, the equipment is already set up in there. Um, everyone brings their own headphones. Um, and uh, this is the best sort of Mercedes uh, style setup that you could have for phone interpreting and video interpreting as well. If you're working with your mobile phone, um, it's just a simple things to think about. Make sure that your uh, phone is fully charged and the reception is good. I have to say that um, just as we were going into the break, I checked the charge on my laptop and it was only 12%. So lucky <laughs> I checked because you would have lost me. So it's just a simple thing that we have to make sure that we keep checking. Um, and as it's, another interpreter added in in our discussions, make sure you got credit on your phone as well. <laughs> Yes, very important. And um, on the, the different aspect is choosing a quiet place. So um, you can see the Korean interpreter here. She's certainly in a quiet place uh, because she's working from the office in the booth. But if you're out and about somewhere, um, are you really in a quiet place? Are you in a place where there is privacy? Can other people overhear the conversation? If the answer is yes, they can overhear the conversation, then this is not a good place to accept the call. So we have to make sure that when we accept phone jobs, we we are in the quiet place, um, that there are no background noises or distractions, and that there is privacy and confidentiality. So there aren't many any um, you know random members of the public who could hear what's going on in this call. And that includes your your family. Um, if you're working uh, in a busy home, um, they're not bound by confidentiality and privacy rules, so they shouldn't be overhearing the conversation as well. So um, this is a point for you to reflect on um, the space that you usually use for phone interpreting and what kind of equipment you use and whether there are any changes that you could possibly make or whether you actually are like the Korean interpreter here and working in these wonderful fully equipped booths for phone interpreting. Just made me think, um, and I'm back home on country, you know, sometimes you get on the phone and in the background people start to argue and fight or dogs start going off and, and start howling and fighting amongst each other and you hear people going, grunt, 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 you know, with all the animals. So, um, you know, just 
if you're if you're back home on country and or even here in my own office when my kids come running in and jumping all over me that yeah it is really important to be in that quiet space we, just we, once, have... we once had feedback um on an interpreter who accepted a job in the afternoon um and it was during lockdown last year uh we got feedback from the service provider apparently that interpreter was in her kitchen preparing dinner with kids running around and asking her questions and and disturbing her and she thought it was okay to go ahead and do phone interpreting and it clearly wasn't um mm. sometimes we just have to say no because it, it is not the right time at our end mm. Yeah, it is tough when we've been in lockdown and everything merges <laughs> and mm. hard to separate those spaces. We had one really good example from one of the interpreters on the webinar the other day who likes to get in the car to take a phone interpreting job, not driving the car, but sitting in the car <laughs> with the aircon on. So she's got her little private capsule, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And and I love that because that's almost like a booth and they're conditioned on top of everything else. But you mm. do will not want to be driving the car, um, a, which happened to one of our interpreters was driving the car um, and doing video interpreting. Oh, no. So clearly people <laughs> at the other mistake. end could see that she was in the car driving. And then later on when we got that feedback, she denied it. But um, I think it was a lesson for her. She's not going to do video interpreting and drive. Hopefully, want to phone interpreting and drive again. Not not safe. Um, not good for concentration. You know, you can't focus on your driving or on your interpreting. I love it when there's bad examples not from our <laughs> sector. <All right. laughs> we can learn from other people's mistakes. Excellent. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. So now we're going to start the call and at the start of the call, um, still very important to have the right setup. So introduce yourself and explain your role. Uh, if um, you have worked with these clients before, then probably there is no need for a lengthy introduction or um, explanation of the role because they've worked with you before and they know how to um, how you work. But if they haven't, it's important to um, let the clients know that your role is to interpret everything accurately and that you maintain confidentiality of the communication and remain impartial. You might want to ask your clients to identify themselves, particularly if you know that there is a group um, participating in that call. If it's just one service provider and one um, Indigenous client and they've already introduced themselves, that's great. But if you've got the client's family members or if you've got multiple service providers or involved in the call, you would want to know who is participating. Um, you might want to check the phone setup that they have at their end and that's what happened in that healthcare interpreter service video um, when there was phone passing and the interpreter suggested a switch to um, speakerphone. Um, ask them to minimise background noise. Uh, we're assuming that you've already uh, minimised yours and that you are in a quiet place. But if there are some blasting televisions or radios at the other end, um, please ask them to, um, to turn that off because otherwise you won't be able to do your job very well. And if the professional has not introduced the topic, you did not have the briefing prior to everyone going online, you can still ask for a briefing so that you can um, prepare yourself at that last minute, at least mentally you know what's what's coming up. And of course, if that happens and you get that last minute minute briefing in front of the Indigenous client, then you would have to um, s interpret that briefing into the uh, in a language other than English as well. So everyone is always present and knows, knows what's going on um, throughout the whole exchange. Yeah, and so I, I guess that isn't really then a, a full briefing like we know it, but rather a just tell us what the topic is. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's uh, that's actually, you did see that in the video because at the beginning, the doctor was saying this lady has just had an angiogram and I'm going to go through the results with her. Uh, and you can hardly call it a briefing, but that's what is able to happen at the last minute, really. Yeah. Okay, so we have another couple of scenarios of me calling Anya to book. We've already booked her for some jobs. She's already confirmed that she's available. So this time I'm going to be various professionals calling the interpreter ready to start the job. So we just want to practice some of those questions, some of that introduction and that process right at the start of the call. Um, 
Because like like Anna's been saying, it's all about this setup stage. So we want to make sure everyone feels confident doing this bit. So you set up for success. Okay. Are you ready, Anya? You've got your phone yes, charged I'm, there. I'm, feel, and... I feel, I'm feeling a little bit under the pressure here and a little bit nervous. <laughs> no pressure. You just have to be perfect. No. <laughs> okay. So um, basically, I want you to introduce yourself. Um, check you know who's on the call, um, what the phone setup is, and checking everyone can hear you. They're the kind of things that you want to do at the start of every phone interpreting job. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Bring, 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 bring. Hello, this is Lavinia. Oh, hi, Lavinia. It's Lauren here from Centrelink. Um, I've got Ruby, my client, on the line. We're ready to go. Hello, Ruby. Hello, um, Lauren, is that right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Just have to make Hello. sure that I got the right name. Um, yeah, so I'm Lavinia. I'm your interpreter for today in Pindaby Lurcha. Um, I just want to do a quick introduction to Ruby. Um, hey, Ruby, Paya Nyundo, Nai Runa Lipiniana, Nyundo Panangalan, Nyundo Janatangalan, Art Milan Jawanka, Jawan Palagurur, Panaginani, Nai Lu Kutaraina Wankaku, and Nai Runa. Back to you, Lauren. Okay, are we ready to start? Um, can I just check to see who else is in the room besides Ruby with you there, please, Lauren? Um, well, actually, no, Ruby's on her own mobile phone in community. Mm -hmm. I'm in the um, Centrelink call centre. All right. Um, so can I just also check that Ruby and you, can you hear me? Ruby? And Ruby has yeah, said, yes, yeah. she can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've just asked Ruby if she can hear me and she said that she could hear me clearly. Um, oh, sorry, not clearly, it's a little bit dodgy, sorry. So she can't really hear what, what's been said. Um, mm, okay. Not well, sure what the phone setup is like on her end. Um, so just ask them how many bars has she got on her reception to make sure that she's got enough reception. And she says that she's got one and it keeps cutting in and out. Um, so I'm, Okay, does um, she know where she can go for better reception? Um, <laughs> no, sorry, there's no, it's not working. So um, we might need to either reschedule for another time so that she is able to hear her. Otherwise, it's going to be um, difficult to have this communication coming through, Lauren. Okay. Um, if she can hear us, check maybe we could put it through the council office phone or is there a better time that I could call back on her mobile? Ruby, Palla on you to Uncle and Yangani Bagin cancel opus of Bagin ten and Talapon Palla or Cari Babalan or Ting Rung Nya Time Yan Papa Mula Bangala and Kanya, what Palagur and Ayla or Chukar and Jagi Pijing Europe. She said that's fine. Um, she can go to the council office and we can reconnect um, at two o'clock today. Good one. Good, great problem solving of a scenario that we didn't know was going to happen. I wasn't even sure whether I was going to go into language or not either. But it just made better sense, otherwise it would be awkward. Yeah, but no, that's good. I mean, we're trying to make sure we can get the mechanics right before we get into the um, the content and have it stuff up in the middle of that. Mm. Okay, maybe we'll just do one more. Okay, hang on, I'll choose my scenario next. I, did, I felt like I've been a little bit rusty with my introduction as well in language. I haven't done it in a while. <laughs> it's a bit rusty. Well, I'll give you another chance. Are you ready? <laughs> ring, 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 run. ring. <laughs> Hello, this is Lavinia. 
Oh, hello, Lavinia. It's Dr. Campbell here um, from the hospital. Um, we're ready to go with the patient. Um, are you ready to start interpreting? Uh, yes. So um, just a, um, a quick introduction of my role, if that's OK, to the patient. Um, can you tell me the patient's name again? Sorry, Dr. Campbell. Oh, yep. So I'm here with Ruby Jones um, mm -hmm. and the hospital. OK, and she does actually have some of her family here, too. So she does have a few of her family members there. Can you are you able to tell me who they are or? I haven't asked their names yet, but they're her two daughters. Two daughters. OK, and. Um, all right, well, um, I'll introduce myself to Ruby and then um, and then I'll come back to you in a minute, Dr. Campbell. If you can okay. pass oh. the phone. Oh, sorry. Can you just tell me what sort of phone setting? Am I on a speaker phone? Am I on a mobile phone? Is it a three way call? Can you just confirm what sort of phone um, we have? Um, yeah, we weren't able to use the proper phones because there's a black spot here, but I can put this um, phone onto speaker phone. Is that better? A speaker phone. Is that right? Yeah. Right. Or just a mobile or well, the, um, the water phone on speaker mode. So am I on speakerphone right now? Yes, you are. And you can hear me clearly? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, I just talked to the to the um, patients. Um, Ruby, um, what did you call in one can Yeah. And I'm going to call in one can you call in one can you call in one can and I'm going to call you Jane. And I'm going to Amy. You are. Bye. So sorry, doctor. I just asked the, the client for their daughter's names, who are Jane and Amy, um, who are also in the room. Um, and every, and I also checked to see if everybody could hear me, and they said that they could hear me as well. Excellent. Oh, I'm sweating. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. And they are the, the difficult ones to jump in again with those assertive questions. Get in there with your confidence to take control and set yourself up properly. So people will respect you for doing that. And as you can see, I've been doing interpreting for a while and I still get nervous as if it's a real scenario. So, <laughs> so and hence the reason why I have notes. Ah. <laughs> I'm <Excellent. cheating. laughs> Okay, let's get on to uh, crunch time. Um, so we've just seen a wonderful example of setting it all up. Um, and believe me, if you've set it up correctly, you're halfway there. Your session is going to run so much more smoothly, particularly when you have a group and you know that you know there is a patient and the patient's two daughters and you know their names, you've heard their voices. It's going to um, make a lot more sense when they come and, and start talking and participating in that consultation. So now we've got it all beautifully set up. Um, and what do we do during the call? Um, some strategies that I would like to highlight, and um, then we'll talk to you about a role play that you can do to um, practice these strategies. Some of these we've already flagged, so um, this will be nothing new to you. And the first one is to listen carefully to the client's intonation tone volume to make up for the absence of visual cues because we were talking about you know the 55 percent of the communication being visual um, which is what we don't see so we tune into the tone of the communication to make up for um, the other 23 percent and then the words which can which we can all hear um, use direct speech so that's first person interpreting you might have noticed katisa in our video um, she was using the i pronoun when she was repeating what uh, both the patient was saying and what the doctor was saying in the other language she did however say that sometimes over the telephone for the sake of clarity she will switch to the third person and this is particularly when there is some need for communication management or i, know, uh, I did that during my yeah. 
Mm. And when she's clarifying who was saying what, because there are a few people, different people um, involved in the communication. And then once you get into it and people say what you, what they've got to say, then you use the first person to convey um, what they were saying. We did mention uh, a few times today uh, the need for managing the communication. And that is uh, an example of that is asking clients to pause. So if you're over the telephone um, are hearing someone who just keeps talking and doesn't stop, uh, then uh, it's within your right to um, to cut in uh, and uh, sort of um, very efficiently uh, and briefly indicate that you need to start interpreting and then go into that interpretation and then the speaker can continue if they have more to say. So don't be shy and just wait on the phone for them to keep going and going and keep taking notes and taking notes because if they go on forever, uh, even if you're an excellent note taker, you will not be able to accurately convey that communication. Sometimes people talk really fast. It's hard to keep up. We can ask them to um, slow down. And if there is a whole family present, they might start talking over the top of each other. And of course, no interpreter can keep up with that because we can only interpret for one person speaking at a time. So we've mentioned cutting in, uh, which is something that you will get to practice in role play. So when there is a natural pause in speech, listen for those. And um, you might say, pause there, please. Um, and interpret and when you're ready to hear more you can say okay or please continue um, when you finished your interpreting and in this way you can manage those um, longer segments that I've just mentioned. Note taking is really helpful. It is a very important skill for telephone interpreters. Uh, without note taking, you're going to have to ask people to pause too often, and we don't want to be doing that all the time. So there is a balance between taking notes and asking people to pause when you've really heard um, enough and you need to start interpreting. And if you're getting tired and your concentration is um, dropping and you might not be able to uh, any longer interpret accurately because your mind is fatigued, by all means ask for a quick refresher break and then come back after you know, a couple of minutes, five minutes, um, have a glass of water and with just with after a short break you might be able to do a much better job. So if the call goes on for half an hour, 45 minutes, definitely if it goes for an hour and keep going, you will need a break. So um, don't be shy to ask when you when you need one. You know, you're funny you say that because sometimes when I start to get a bit fatigued, I get my languages mixed up. So I'll go from <laughs> I'll go from speaking English to the English speaker to speaking language to the English speaker and English to the language speaker. <laughs> That's when I know that I need the break. <laughs> Maybe you have a client who speaks a little bit of English, starts speaking in English, and you start interpreting that into the other language <laughs> because you can't think anymore. No, that's yeah. it. <laughs> Just wanted to pick up on that point about what you say when you cut in, and that's something that we've seen thus far in Nati tests that some people aren't that confident with that bit or haven't really decided on what their – three words are that they're going to use to cut in every time. Um, so if you haven't done that, I think you can develop it in role plays or just by practicing yourself. Um, I found this out when I was practicing that I was a little bit all over the place and eventually I got myself into a rhythm of the same little phrase I was going to use every time. Um, and it just comes with practice, I think. And it, and it, when I I guess when I speak in language it doesn't feel natural, like you could say when you quite patala, which is you know can you just hold on a second, or when you patala, which is hang on. But it kind of feels a bit weird saying it on the phone. Like it's okay face to face, but when you say it over the phone, it feels unnatural. So, but I think as time evolves, I think you know um, it might become more easier to be able to do it. Um, because we are on the phone all the time and a lot more. Mm. Definitely a lot easier face to face because face to face we might not even have to say anything. We'll just indicate with our posture and body movement and who we look at that we yeah, actually yeah. going to start interpreting and they see and, it as obvious. And that hand sign, you know, to you know, to let them know to pause, you know, it it face to face is, you know, you become so accustomed to that and mm. 
um, it becomes like a natural sort of but I really like the, the phrase, Lauren, that you are suggesting here, pause there, please, because it's three mm. words, just rolls off your tongue quickly, and it's perfect, because so we don't want to spend too much time explaining that we want them to mm. pause. Mm. No, that's right. And I also found just when I was practicing that the first time you say it, it might be a little bit longer, and then the next time, they know you're going to do this thing, so you can just say, pause there. You can drop the please. You, you've been polite the yeah. first time and then you can get into a rhythm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for this next bit, we're not including this in this recording, but we have written a role play, which is a, a Centrelink based role play um, that we're happy to make available the script. If you'd like to have a go at practicing your phone interpreting using this script, we can send you a copy and we'll make it available. But what we're also trying to do is make recordings of interpreters doing this role play in different Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander languages. So as we record them, we'll make them available to everybody. And it's a good chance to do it yourself, but then also to watch other people in action and to see how different interpreters use different techniques or different phrases to interrupt. And hopefully fix up the mistake that I made with the other role plays. The spot that I had to think. <laughs> it, it does walk through the whole process, uh, well, not accepting the call, but from the beginning of the call. So when you do get to role play um, with, with your colleagues or um, people around you um, with, with the script, after you've role played, um, here are some questions that we would like you to reflect on um, when you're thinking about how the role play went. And the focus for us is on the strategies used in the role play. So um, you might want to reflect on things like, um, how did you handle the introductions? What will you say in introductions uh, when a phone interpreting job comes up? So have it prepared in your mind. And again, you don't want it to be very long. It needs to be fairly brief, but to the point. So think about how will I introduce myself? Um, what do I need to say about my role? Now, in terms of the interpreting practice, um, how long were the segments? At what point did you ask people to pause? Um, did you manage the cutting in well? Is there anything there that you could change? Um, how is your memory going? Um, did you take notes? How good is your note taking? Uh, were you pausing people because um, they said too much or because your memory and note taking are not so great? So these are all the things that you might want to um, reflect on when you're role playing. The interventions, when you did ask people to pause or perhaps to clarify if there was a um, an unfamiliar term, how did you handle them? Um, are you happy? Um, will you do anything differently in the future? Closure is also important, um, just like all the introductory stuff, closing at the end and making sure that um, everyone is happy to terminate the call um, is an important aspect and politely saying goodbye and, and, and thank you. And anything else that comes up in your role play that you want to reflect on? You know, um, this just made me think of my mum when I talked to her on the phone. Um, she doesn't say goodbye sometimes and it's like you're like oh I've got to go somewhere now like in sort of a conversation and then they just hang up without anything so we've got to I guess be ready for that as well when like how yes. we're going to wrap it up um, especially in that sort of cultural aspect um, but reflecting back to the role play I just did on the, my introduction um, I, I did make a few mistakes now that I think back and, and I guess it's good reflective practice on myself on how to better introduce myself. So it's really important to really know what you're going to say when you introduce yourself and being prepared. And something stuck with me um, after the work, the, the webinar that we did before with participants, we had a little chat afterwards and the mentor who was present in that webinar said that, remember, you don't get it 100% from the beginning. We all get better with time. So it's important to think about how did I go? Um, you know, um, what, what can I improve? And be mindful that you keep improving, you keep learning, and then you um, get some tips in the webinar and then you keep learning on the job. So, 
don't be too hard on yourself if you think, oh, I really stuffed that up. I'm really not happy with the way I did it. Because remember that next time is your opportunity to, to learn from those mistakes and to do it better. And we're not recording this again. <laughs> <laughs> And just a, um, a quick comment on the use of uh, first as opposed to third person. Uh, you can see the results of um, two studies here, and I don't have the exact figures in front of me um, any, uh, at the moment, but if you're looking at the study done in 2007, uh, the blue um, section of the pie represents the um, number of times that interpreters use the first person, so the pronoun I in interpreting. So um, the ones who said always um, is the blue section. And again, if you're looking at the study done in 2015, again, the blue section is the interpreters who said they use the first person always. And you can see how the blue section has grown. They're fairly similar studies in the sense that the 2007 study was done in Australia and the 2015 in New Zealand. And the number, um, the growing number of interpreters using the first person is quite encouraging because it um, shows me that there is growing professionalism in the profession and knowledge of um, the uh, expected techniques. Uh, but we do acknowledge that over the telephone, sometimes you switch into the third person to clarify who is speaking and when you're managing the communication too, because the phone environment is quite confusing. So we find ourselves to clarify who is who and what who said what, um, so that everyone can follow the conversation. And just a comment about ending the call. Um, what I was saying earlier, important to make sure that there is um, a, a proper um, closing, which again doesn't have to be long, but you know how awkward telephone conversations can be and how often the line drops out. So we just want to make sure that it doesn't sound like we've suddenly dropped out. Um, so um, I would encourage you to end the call professionally, say something like thank you for using interpreting services and, and goodbye. And if appropriate, stay on the call with the professional to debrief. And sometimes the professional will sense that perhaps the call might have been a bit, a little bit tough on you, that perhaps you need a chat before uh, you go on uh, to your next assignment. And they might say goodbye to the uh, to the client and then keep you on the line for a bit of a debrief. I, I know one wonderful GP that I've worked with who makes it a habit to keep the interpreter on the line at the end, just, to, just in case they need a bit of a debrief, particularly if it was a, a stressful appointment. A stressful job. And sometimes it's a little bit awkward for us. Um, you know, we don't really have those greetings where we say goodbye and things like that. And I mentioned that before, they just hang up, you know, and, and you know, listening out for those you are colour, you know, we've got to finish, you know, like it, you listen out for those key words um, when you're talking to your client and making sure that, you know, that, that ending is done appropriately. Mm. Mm. So after the job, uh, you've hung up, uh, you ended the call appropriately. Now it's time to take care of yourself. Stand up and stretch. Yes. <laughs> But pay attention to your body. Are you stiff somewhere? Uh, how do you, how how can you relax and, and move about? Uh, which part of the body is the stiffest one? Um, so look look after that because you you don't want to um, become sick or have not neck problems or shoulder problems because you've been doing too much telephone interpreting. So that's the physical aspect. Um, but debriefing, uh, which we have touched on with the service provider or a colleague or perhaps a service um, if uh, if you were a little bit more um, stressed or upset than usual, uh, a colleague or a service provider might not be enough. And you might ask the interpreter service for some suggestions of someone, someone to talk to. We've already touched on reflecting on your performance in relation to the role play. So think about what what am I happy with? Um, how did I go? Uh, what was perfect? Uh, what needs a little bit of improvement? Was there any challenging vocabulary? 
uh, anything that I don't know the equivalent for in the other language. If I if that's the case, can I talk to someone to perhaps research that vocabulary a little bit more? Um, can I check any sites um, and, and learn from um, from the terminology that I wasn't familiar with? Sometimes you might need an appointment with a counsellor if things get really tough. Um, but at other times, it's those self-care strategies that um, that come into um, place. I um, personally like to do yoga and um, Monday nights um, in lockdown are my yoga, yoga nidra night when um, I lie down on my bed at about a quarter past eight and connect with the yoga teacher um, at my center and, and the other people who like yoga, yoga like myself. And um, we do the yoga nidra practice for about half an hour and on Monday nights I don't get up from bed again after that <laughs> and I really look forward to that all week so uh, I hope that all of you have um, one or two practices or even more uh, of self-care and that you are looking after yourself take time off when needed and stay connected with other interpreters so um, make sure that you um, take up any opportunities for live sessions that Lauren and Lavinia might put on for you in the future <laughs> For sure. What do you do? I need to look after yourself. Um, I actually like going for walks and I play netball as well. So sports is my outlet and exercise. But I also enjoy being around my children and my husband. And um, I feel very blessed that I get a cup of tea made for me and coffee made for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's my self-care strategy. And also oh, okay. things like going to church, you know, making sure my physical and spiritual and mental health has been met. Yeah, always need to have the balance. So there are definitely the services out there um, and the interpreting agencies and only really good with following up and having colleagues that you can talk to. Um, we c at Nati could also hook you up with other mentors who are happy to um, debrief with each other. It's part of professional solidarity. Yeah, and I guess coming from a child protection background, I would always utilise, um, if you're with a government agency, the EAP, EAP service that they had, and I will just yeah. go and talk to a counsellor if I needed to. So that's mm -hmm. available to a lot of people as well, Not most lot of our interpreters. For sure. So we just, Good. yeah. Yeah, I, I might talk about the resources because um, I was involved in the development of two of these. Um, the, at the Healthcare Interpreter Service, we developed a resource for interpreters, uh, interpreting in healthcare. It has a section on phone interpreting, which is very similar to the best practice guide that um, Lavinia and Lauren have developed for you, but you might want to have a look at ours as well, and this is available online. We also developed a fact sheet for um, service providers on working with interpreters over the telephone so you can see um, what it looks like and it's a very important resource because it teaches service providers on how to work with interpreters and if they all read it our um, life as a phone interpreter will be a lot easier um, so we do make an effort to educate service providers on working with interpreters um, we don't get to um, as many as we would like. So that's why each and every one of us has to take up that job of um, explaining your role and educating uh, service providers on how to work with interpreters over the telephone so that they also learn from, from you. And um, OSIT has telephone interpreting protocols. OSIT is the Australian Institute of Interpreters and Translators for Spoken Languages in Australia. Auslan interpreters have their own association. Um, you might want to check out the OZID guidelines for phone interpreting as well. Yeah, I particularly like that one pager that you had there. Um, it seemed to me like I like a, a one pager, hence our, our checklist, but it seemed to me also the kind of thing that you could accidentally leave behind with the doctor or, you know, in an office here and there. Um, it's always really hard to um, get that airtime with professionals um, so sometimes leaving a bit of paper like that lying around mm. also helps the cause rather than insisting that they attend a two-hour training session with you Absolutely. and things like that. 
If you can, get them to, to do it to our training session. I wanted <laughs> to develop a brochure with a few pages of fine interpreting, but I was told, no, you're not going to get their attention if you give them a whole brochure. It's got to be one page. <laughs> and yeah, again, this, it's this development that um, the booklet for interpreters was developed in 2014 and the fact sheet was developed last year. So we've learned in the period of time, you can't um, get too many people to read, read long documents. So brief mm, yeah. and to the point is good. Excellent. Well, we might draw it to a close. Are there any final words of wisdom, ladies? Ah, I think uh, um, I've uh, imparted all the wisdom I could think of in relation to foreign <laughs> interpreting. <laughs> and I've really enjoyed the, the role plays today. Uh, and I, I hope everyone who uh, uh, logs into this session uh, learns from it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us, Anna. It's been a pleasure having you with the Nadi team. Thank you for inviting me, Anya and Lauren. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.